of the black hole bomb and black hole civilizations. Ah, hold on. That's stupid thing. All right, there we go. Turn this up a little. Let's go. Black holes are the largest collections of pure, violent energy in the universe. If you come too close, they'll devour you and add your energy to their collection. And so, the energy is lost to us forever. Sounds like me. Or is it? It turns out there's a universe cheat code. A way of powering civilizations That's until Starcraft. the very death of everything, or of constructing go. the largest bomb in the universe. But how? Didn't we learn that all energy is trapped forever in black holes, even light? This is true. Everything you think you know about the weirdest thing in the universe is about to get weirder for one simple reason. Black holes are spinning. Why black holes spin? When really, really massive stars die, their cores collapse under their own gravity into black holes. This means something very big becomes very, very tiny. I don't think they all do that, though. Just like the really, 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 really big uh, stars. But I don't know if this video is going to go over all that. Like the tiniest anything can be in this universe. But stars are rotating, and a fundamental property of our universe is that things that are spinning don't want to stop spinning. We call this angular momentum. And this angular momentum can't go away. A big thing that spins and becomes smaller spins faster. Like a so, skater. as the core of a star collapses, its momentum makes it spin faster and faster and faster until it collapses into a black hole. And the black hole keeps on spinning inconceivably fast. Some of them spin millions of times a second. Why spinning black holes are special? Just like non-spinning black holes, spinning black holes have an event horizon and a singularity at their core where all of their mass is concentrated. The singularity is usually described as a single, infinitely small point with no surface area. But points can't rotate, so a rotating singularity can't be a point. Instead, it's a ringularity. A ringularity is a ring with a thickness of zero and no surface, spinning extremely fast, containing all the mass of the black hole. The black hole is spinning so fast that it morphs space and time itself. It literally drags space with it, such as its power. This creates a new... Has anybody ever wanted to get sucked into a black hole just to see what would happen? I think about this probably more than is sane for the average person, but I think that it would be re like, let's say I'm on my way out anyways. I think the coolest way to go is by a black hole. Yeah, like, no, I don't. I want to experience it myself. I think, I think that would be the most insane way to go. I don't know. I, I'm so curious. Spaghettification. Yeah. Yeah. Turn me into you. I'm. I'm a quarter Italian. I could. I could live happily. Being turned into pasta. Might live forever in the black hole. <laughs> Doesn't it mess with time? Well, time is a concept that we created to basically define our existence. Time only exists as long as we are alive to perceive time in the way we know it. So, which, which is why when I hear people like this say like, oh, uh, it, it breaks um, it breaks matter and time. Like, I, I, I kind of fail to understand how they're explaining it that way because time only makes sense how we perceive it. For stellar masses, for stellar mass ones, you'd get stretched into spaghetti. For supermassive ones, it's like you'd fall in and time would stop. Yeah, I don't know. 
it uh, it would be really interesting to learn more about black holes. I am very, very, very... Well, I'm fascinated by everything, but space is one of those things that's just like... I can't touch it. I want to learn more about it. And it's insane the stuff that people have theorized about space in in human history. At least learning about things here on Earth, we can touch it. We can see it in front of our face, you know? There's like a physical manifestation of the thing in front of you. You can put it in a lab. You can you can look at it in front of you. You can smell it. You can feel it. Space is so incomprehensible to the majority of people. Even the people are just like, oh yeah, no, it's dark up there. There's giant gas balls out there. But actually, when you sit down and think about space, like, that's some existential dread out there. Let me tell you, it is one of the most fascinating things ever. Like, yeah, Earth is cool as hell, but I've, I can see it. I have a hard time fathoming everything off the planet. Even just going to the moon is mind-blowing. Getting off the planet alone, mind-blowing. And then with the new, the new telescope that went out, uh, the James Webb, all the stuff coming in from that is just so unbelievably incredible. It's fascinating stuff. I love it. We should do a space day one day. Oh man. All right, well, we, let's keep going on with the video. New and super weird region of space-time, the ergosphere, which envelops the black hole. If space and time are completely broken inside the event horizon, then they're only half broken inside the ergosphere. Inside the ergosphere, nothing makes sense. It's possible to enter it and then leave it again, but it's probably not a great experience. You can imagine it like this. Falling into a static black hole is like sliding down a hole. Being inside the ergosphere of a spinning black hole is like spiraling down a deadly drain. The black hole transfers its own kinetic energy in the form of rotation to everything that enters the ergosphere. The ringularity makes you dance whether you want to or not. You need to move faster than the speed of light just to stand still here, which is impossible. But here's our cheat code. We can steal this energy. And there's a lot of energy to steal. How to steal energy from a monster. Take the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way. We could steal as much energy from it as every single star in the Milky Way emits in a billion years combined. The easiest way to steal this energy is, oddly enough, to drop something into the black hole. We've seen that the ringularity forces energy on us when we enter the ergosphere, which is a lot like being in a whirlpool with space-time rushing around and around. If you're clever, you can use the water to your advantage and swim faster than before. In practice, this means sending a rocket into the ergosphere and making a trade with the black hole. We give it some mass energy and it gives us some of its rotational energy. But it's not a fair trade, we get the better deal. Normally, if you fire a rocket, you exchange chemical energy for kinetic energy. This is like pushing yourself forward in a swimming pool. But if you fire a rocket inside the ergosphere, it's like pushing yourself forward in a wave pool. The rotational energy of the waves gives you a much stronger boost than you could get just by pushing yourself. The boost from the rotation of the black hole is so big that you leave the ergosphere with much more energy than you entered it. That's cool. The black hole gives a tiny amount of its rotational energy to you and slows down a little. Obviously, this requires a lot of food. Fortunately, black holes aren't picky eaters. An advanced future civilization would probably harvest asteroids to drop them into the black hole when they needed an energy boost. But there's an even better way to get energy from a black hole, and oddly enough, it builds the biggest bomb any living thing could ever hope to build. The black hole bomb. We only need two things to build a black hole bomb, a fast spinning black hole and a big mirror. The mirror has to completely envelop the black hole, which is similar to a Dyson sphere, a megastructure that harvests the energy of an entire star. 
although our mirror would be easier to build. Mirrors are simpler and black holes are much, much more compact than stars. If we made the mirror 10 centimeters thick, the metal of a big asteroid would probably be enough material for a black hole with the mass of our sun. Once our mirror is in place, we only need to open a window and shoot electromagnetic waves at the black hole. You can imagine what happens next by imagining tossing a ball at a wall and it coming back faster than a bullet. The waves hit the black hole at light speed. A small proportion of the waves falls past the event horizon to disappear forever. But a much larger amount sloshes through the ergosphere, where the black hole forces some of its rotational energy on them and amplifies them. They now begin super radiant scattering, which are fancy science words meaning bouncing around between mirror and black hole and getting stronger. That is so cool. So, I guess our main problem would just be finding a black hole that's not a supermassive black hole, obviously, and uh, um, building this. I think I think the biggest problem would be getting to it because I don't think that there's anything, like I don't think we have any black holes in our solar system, right? And if we did, that would probably be a big problem. Getting out of the solar system takes a long time. Yeah, and making something that wouldn't get torn to shreds by it. Yeah, well, I mean, hmm. Well, black holes don't necessarily have to be that big, though, Lance. That's the thing. Like he's, like you said, a a black hole made of here. I'm gonna look it up real quick. Um, how big would the black hole be if our sun turned into one? I don't know if they have this answer. Uh, at this radius, the escape speed is equal. If the sun was replaced with a black hole that had the same mass as the sun, the Schwarzschild radius would be three kilometers compared to the sun's radius of nearly 700,000 kilometers. It would only be three kilometers! Its radius would only be three kilometers. That's fucking nothing! That's nothing! That is so small! How close could you get to it? I don't know, but three kilometers is fucking nothing. Because an arc, A-R-C, is like an electrical term. So like an arc reactor, you know? Like a an arc reactor is a real thing. So I've just made it a pun. And it would be pronounced arc anyways, not arch. So, arc works. I, I would much rather be called arc. Typically I go by arc with like a K because it's easier for people. You know, I've seen Iron Man once and it was a long time ago. Deadly silence as well. We all process how simple it actually is to make a black hole. I mean, this would be- this would not be simple. <laughs> it would not be this simple. <laughs> no. Every time they go around, they are getting exponentially stronger. By opening some windows in the mirror, we can extract the energy from the waves as fast as they grow, which we could use, in theory, to create what would be, for all practical purposes, an endless source of energy for trillions of years. Or we could blow it up, if the waves are not released, they will continue to get stronger and stronger and take more and more energy from the black hole until the mirror shatters. A supermassive black hole would release as much energy as a supernova, making the bomb the largest explosion any living being could ever create. The last home in a dying universe. The beauty of the black hole bomb, the Penrose process and the super radiant scattering is that they are not science fiction. In the far, far future, this might be the only way to survive in our dying universe. After all the red dwarfs have cooled down and all the white dwarfs transformed into black dwarfs, the universe will turn dark forever. Rotating black holes might be the only sources of energy in the entire universe that life could harvest. If so, 
the last living being in existence might one day end its life around a black hole, which is equally chilling and uplifting. It turns out that even without any light, there are places we can go. Black holes are as interesting as they are mysterious, but there's actually a surprising amount we do know. Using maths, we can calculate things and come up with theories about how we die if we fall into them. If you're the sort of person who gets excited about maths and calculating these things for yourself, our friends at Brilliant have put together a fantastic black hole quiz to help you get your head around them. Brilliant seems like such Brilliant an awesome is a problem-solving website. website that teaches you to think like a scientist by guiding you through the problems. They take concepts like these, break them up into bite-sized pieces, present clear thinking in each part, and then build back up to an interesting conclusion. If you visit brilliant.org slash nutshell or click the link in the description, you can sign up for free and learn all kinds of cool stuff. And as a bonus for Kurzgesagt viewers, the first 688 people will also get 20% off their annual membership. If you want to truly learn about black holes and support Kurzgesagt, this is one of the best ways to do it.